thank everybody for coming. Uh, before we get started, I will say the only thing is, ask you to respect, we can't talk about a pending, any pending legal issues. But, uh, you know, the coaches came to, came to me, said, hey, put this together. So this is where we're at. I think what we should do to start is maybe go start with Holly. Every coach introduce themselves in their sport. Uh, hello, Holly Warlick, women's basketball. Butch Jones, football. Beth Alford Sullivan, men's and women's track and field and cross country. Matt Credich, men's and women's swimming. Dave Parrington, men's and women's diving. Rick Barnes, basketball. Lisa Glenn, rowing. Jim Kelson, men's golf. Mike Patrick, women's tennis. Rob Patrick, women's volleyball. Judy Pavone, women's golf. Sam Winterbottom, men's tennis. Dave Serrano, baseball. Brian Penske, soccer. Karen Weekly, softball. Ralph Weekly, softball. I think, Rick, you want to get us started? First of all, uh, thank you all for being here. I know it was a pretty quick notice. And, uh, you know, this is, I think, my uh, 39th year in college athletics. And I've been blessed to work at a lot of different universities. And throughout every stop, there's a lot of things that uh, you learn, a lot of things you deal with as coaches. And, uh, and I've only been here a very short time. And in that short time, uh, one, this is one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen, where as a group of coaches, head coaches, that wanted to get together to do this without uh, anything from the administration to set this up. And uh, I think it really speaks volumes about my counterparts here in terms of how much we love the University of Tennessee. And we realize there's a lot of things, uh, uh, bad publicity, things that are being written out there that, um, that we, we know it's there. We have to deal with it every day in our job. But the one reason that we wanted to do this is that we also realize that we have some great leaders here in our administration that are doing everything they can to help us do our jobs at the very highest level. And the other thing is that we have great students that we work with every day, that we know that we don't want the stereotype that there's something out there that's not true, because everywhere, and it's, and it's not perfect now, and it's never gonna be perfect. But the fact is, I can tell you this, that the University of Tennessee's athletic department is as good as I've ever seen anywhere that I've ever been. And when you look at what's going on, we have to stand up as a group and, and tell you all the good side of it, too. We have to do that because it's not fair to our current student athletes, our past student athletes, and our future student athletes that they don't understand that there are great things going on, on this campus. And I promise you we will be honest and direct and we'll answer everything that we can possibly answer to you. Some things we can't, but um, we're here. And um, we want you to ask us everything that you want to ask. And I promise you we're going to be truthful with you. But we are all proud to be coaches at the University of Tennessee. I'd like to add on to Rick's comments. Um, Karen Weekly again. I coach softball. And I've been here 15 years. And I witnessed a lot of the transition and the changes that we've been through as an athletic department. But I can tell you that we're in the best position we've ever been right now at the University of Tennessee as coaches and as student athletes. We have better resources, better facilities than we've ever had. Our student athletes, our female student athletes have greater access to those resources than they've ever had. And as a coaches group, we're closer than we've ever been. Where else does your head football coach, Butch Jones, come and sit through a doubleheader for Super Regionals for women's softball and a rain delay to boot? and stay the whole four and a half hours. That just doesn't happen. I talk to my colleagues all over the country. We have access to our indoor football facility right now during our season. The football team uses half the facility several days a week so that all of our sports can have the other half to conduct their practices. I talked to a colleague not too long ago where they have two football facilities and their coach is, is insisting on using both so that nobody else gets to use any of them. Those things just don't happen here at Tennessee because we support one another. Rick Barnes, last year, after he, shortly after he arrived at Tennessee, one night we're having BP at 8 o'clock at night. All of a sudden he walks into the softball stadium, says, I saw the lights on. I just love watching BP. Can I hang out with you guys? Those things don't happen at other schools. Charles Davis reaches out to me, a VFL, during postseason play. That's all because of the wonderful culture here that's created by our administration and then when Butch was hired, 
to get everybody back involved, all of our football alums back involved to create that family atmosphere. And the list just goes on and on. And the culture here right now is the best it's ever been. And like Rick said, those stories aren't being told. And the image that's being displayed of our culture is unfair. And that's why we're here together today, because we want people to hear the positives. I can start that off with, uh, we do quite a bit of recruiting with track and field and cross country, uh, large groups of recruiting, and we're not being hit with that at all. Um, when, when you're recruiting, you're, you're working with a young person and their family, and you're, they're looking to you as the coach and the program and what the environment is within that. And so when we're out in a home visiting, it's about track and field and it's about Tennessee and what we can do. Um, so the image out there for us has not been is not been an issue, and I think it's it's more that um, you know there's a there's a true essence of what we're trying to do here at Tennessee, and when you convey that across, there's a sense of trust, there's a sense of, of confidence in what we're all doing. So we're we're not um, we're not going to let that get in the way. Um, we're going to explain things if it does come up, and um, we're going to pursue what we're trying to do and, and be champions here. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, echo to what Beth had said, and we recruit nationally in our volleyball program, and it's a, a personal relationship that we create with the uh, recruit and their families. Uh, they come on campus. One of the things that we do is we have our, our recruits meet with our administration, um, and one of the things that I think, the reason we do that is because whether it's culture, whether it's what the program's about, that's been set at the top, set at the top with me as a head coach, and then it's set at the top with our administration in terms of our athletic department. And every single recruit that comes through here feels very, very comfortable, their parents and the, and the recruit themselves, about what Tennessee's about. And, and there's an echoing of, of the, the great things that happen in our program. You don't have a 3.0 GPA average for your whole athletic department if there's a, if there's a culture that isn't good. Um, our team GPA for volleyball basically for almost the last eight years for every semester has been over a 3.0, except maybe one semester in that entire time. That doesn't happen without you know, some really good things happening here. I've been here for 20 years. We've had more SEC academic award honorees in those 20 years than any other SEC school. And I think all these things point to the type of culture that we have here, which, which allows young people, females and males, to thrive. And that's something that um, when, when we are talking to recruits, they see these facts and, and they're comfortable with it. To piggyback on what Rob just said, I think the big thing is the culture is known. It hasn't bothered us a bit, but what is really a big seller is when they come here, when they come on campus, when they meet these other coaches, when they see the camaraderie between the coaches, when they see the facilities. For instance, this coming year, we're getting a new scoreboard, as is baseball and soccer. Uh, we needed it. We got it. Uh, the administration has taken care of us. They're doing the things that we need done to help us recruit. So it's, <clears throat> excuse me, been a very positive thing. Well, I was just going to echo what Ralph said. We need to get them on campus to show them what a great culture we have. Uh, it's as simple as that. Once they're here, they absolutely love the place. Um, you know, that's, the, that's our battle just to get them here. So what's the perception out there is, is, is really incorrect. Uh, when they come here, they love it. They're amazed. They're amazed. I, I think, is it, is it uh, mentioned in recruiting? Yes. I think we, as coaches, we recruit kids as they are one of our own. So are we concerned anywhere they go, whether it's University of Tennessee or anywhere, for their safety? Absolutely. So we talk a lot about, just as you would your daughter, don't go out alone at night, know where you're going to parties, those type of things. So I think we have uh, speakers once a month 
to come in and talk about um, things that kids may not may not be aware of, sexual harassment, um, bullying, those any any subject. But I think as coaches, we're in an environment here that uh, is a safe environment. So it's up to us to let them know that uh, no, you don't you don't walk down the street uh, by yourself. So those are things in place, and it's up to us. We, do, we are their mo mother. We are their father. And wherever they go, we've got to portray safety. And, and I will say, if I had a daughter, I would, I would not hesitate one bit for, for her to come on campus. I've been here for 30-something years. We've got to be doing something right, or, or I would have not have bought in and said, this is a great place. So I think as times have changed throughout the years I have been here, um, I wouldn't be sitting here with, with Butch Jones or I wouldn't be getting a text telling me to hang in there. He wouldn't allow me to call up and say, why did you run that play on third down and 10? So, but the relationships we I have. I also invited her to have the next third and 10 call. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to win. So, um, but I think, I think it's, uh, it, it's an atmosphere now that we can bounce things off each other and uh, I think that's what's what's been really special. Hey, Butch, I want some answers. <laughs> I got one for you. Right. To answer your question, um, I think as far as culture, when our recruits and their parents learn about what our priorities are and how we're backing up those priorities, I think they get a really good sense of the culture. Um, we do talk about safety on campus, and anywhere I think any of the coaches have been you know, that's something that you take very seriously. But when they see the importance of academics um, and the performance of our student athletes, and then they go to the Thornton Center and they meet with our advisors, they understand that the culture is in place to support that. Um, when they hear about the pursuit of excellence, both in academics and in their sport, and they come to the facility and they see that it's on campus and there's not a lot of time involved with getting from class to the boathouse, when they see that we're expanding onto the third floor, there's a real emphasis on pursuit of excellence. And I think that there, there's not really questions because of the, our sharing the priorities that we have for our student athletes in our programs. Um, often parents do ask about safety, as Holly mentioned. And um, that's a very common question um, for any concerned parent. And we talk about the same things, um, staying in groups, uh, making decisions that reflect your priorities so that um, you're ready to pursue excellence the next day. Those kinds of things um, are a huge part of our culture. And, and all of our practices are open. If they want to meet Holly Warlick, they get to meet Holly Warlick. If they want to go down and watch Rick Barnes's practice, if they want to go over to volleyball, if they want to get in the Peyton Manning room, and that's you know upstairs in the football facility, Butch makes sure they get in there. It's just that we all share and we all help each other every time, all the time. I know you said we're moving on, but John, just to answer your question from a football perspective, uh, I do think it's real. Uh, our competitors are using it against us, and that's why we're, we're having a number of uh, unofficial visitors. And, uh, you know, this past weekend uh, was a great, great visit for us, and we encouraged parents uh, and prospective student athletes to stay the night to get around campus, uh, to you know, walk the sidewalks, see how you feel. And it was very, very overwhelming. And we have great people here, but also they feel the camaraderie, they feel the passion, they feel the energy, and they feel the excitement, not amongst uh, just the coaching staff, but the student athletes. You know, when we're able to take them to different practices, uh, you know, they're checking their phones to see the scores of the games, all that stuff. Uh, been coaching a long time and I've never been a part of something as special as this. And I don't think, and I don't want to speak for every coach here, but I feel very confidently in saying this. If we didn't feel uh, comfortable, if we didn't have confidence in the mission of this athletic department, of each other, in every individual sport, we wouldn't be sitting here. And all you have to do is come spend a day for eight hours in the indoor facility and watch just about every sport walk through and you watch the dialogue with the, with the student athletes, you watch the respect for each other, the camaraderie, it's pretty special. 
and we've all been doing this a very long time at a number of different institutions. And an environment like this doesn't come around very often. Um, last semester, we had two speakers come in, and um, our team attended. Actually, we sought out a speaker on our own, and our team attended. We tell them the same thing. You have to make good decisions. You have to look out for yourself. Um, our kids are friends with all athletes on all teams, and whether they um, are spending time with an athlete or a non-athlete, they have to look out for themselves, and we stress the importance of that. And these speakers stress the importance of that, taking care of themselves. You know, Mike, I don't think it's any different than what any of you would tell your daughter uh, if she was a teenager about what she should be aware of going out at night and being out on her own. You want to make good decisions. You want to make sure that you're surrounded by people who are going to look out for you and make good decisions along with you. And um, you, so it's having the speakers that come in and, and talk to our student athletes, but also just talking to your team on a daily basis as if you were their parent about making the right kinds of choices. And we all know that when you get on a college campus, you're away from home for the first time, you have a lot of freedom. Um, alcohol is present on any college campus, doesn't matter where you go. And usually a lot of these things happen um, when alcohol is involved. So we talk to our student athletes a lot about those kinds of choices and the environments they find themselves in and when they need to get out and what the danger signals are. So it's just constant education. Mike, I'm going to answer that. Obviously, the, being, being the baseball coach, uh, coaching male athletes, we do the same thing for our guys. Uh, we educate them on, on respecting others. And, and when they're off the field, that everyone's going to be treated with respect. I, I'm kind of bragging about our guys, but I'm sure there's other stories that could be talked about with the other coaches. We just came back from Chattanooga this weekend. And one of the hotel attendants grabbed us and said, I just want to let you know this may be the best well-mannered team that has ever come through our facility. That's what is going on here at the University of Tennessee. I'm not the only one that could tell that story. I think there's a lot of these coaches that could say the same thing. We're doing the same kind of education with our guys, even though they're guys, that they're going to make good choices and we're going to, we're going to insist on them making the, those good choices. I've got three boys of my own at home. As much as I try to educate them, they're not going to make great choices all the time and I'm going to have to punish them. But that's just the way life is. And our guys are going to make mistakes at times. Our guys have done But I, we're going to handle it just like every other coach in this room is going to handle it. Yeah, I'm Matt Credich, the uh, swimming and diving coach. Some of you guys might know me as the uh, defensive coordinator from the spring 2013 game. <laughs> we lost. I was a little bit disappointed to not get a uh, phone call when there was an opening earlier. But I think Butch knew that I want to keep coaching swimming. Um, I could do both, though, if you need advice. Um, as a sidelight, when I, when I was working with a football team, uh, and, and I use that term lightly, I've never been around um, a, a group of, of young men who are so respectful. And if you walk around this campus uh, as a coach, then athletes who know that I'm a coach call me coach. And, th and that's pretty cool. Uh, both men and women. So that's kind of a sidelight. But to answer your question, Mike, we have a lot of formal um, education opportunities, and those are very effective because we've got some great people who come in and speak. Part of a culture, though, is um, is passing on values from from one generation to the next. So the, the seniors on our team will take in the freshmen, both men and women, and say, this is the way we treat each other. And in swimming and diving, we've got people who are scantily clothed, training next to each other all the time. That's the culture that they grow up in. And so their, their character and their bodies are essentially, um, I mean, there's no, no covering up anything. And so there's a, tremendous, uh, there's a tremendous culture of honesty in swimming and diving. And... and when we go to the weight room, we experience the same thing with the other teams that we train with. When we are in the, um, 
in the, the dining room in the study hall, we experience the same thing with the other teams we train with. There's, there's a, a, a culture of kind of brotherhood and sisterhood on our team, and that's passed down from, from uh, class to class. Uh, y'all pretty much said it. it, it uh, look, the, they're kids. These are kids. They can be 6'6". Six, six, they're still kids. And uh, we talk a lot about choices. You have a choice. Um, but it's a consequence that, that you have to deal with. And as everybody says, you, 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 you put out what uh, your, your, your culture is and you try to get them to do right and, and hope they get it. So you just continue to talk about it. Put it out there. And understand that certain environments you don't need to be in. And uh, the kids, bottom line, they, they need to make a choice. And hopefully, as coaches, we have led them to do that as uh, parental figures. Yeah, just briefly, I'll just say I coach both the men and the women. And so our teammates are men and women. And so there's a, there's a sense that goes beyond just the, the safety or the the worry for the women on the team, it's, it's, a, it's a teammate situation. And what I've found at Tennessee, much more than anywhere else I've ever been, is that spreads across all teams. And um, we're probably the most uh, visible team that uses this turf during this time of the year. Um, football accommodates us, scoots into the center of the turf so we can circle and make an oval out of it. Softball is coming in a little bit late or coming in a little bit early to let us get a couple more reps in. We're around all of the athletes most of the time through this winter season. And I can tell you, there is a huge amount of respect and there's a huge amount of care for each other. And um, that is a selling point, but it's also the truth. I really, I can, I see the football guys every single day. They walk by, they make sure they give me the nod or they say hello coach or congrats on whatever's going on. And there's a, there's a true culture of wanting to be champions and doing it the right way. And that is taught from the top down. Our leadership expects that of us, and we expect that of our teams, and it portrays out in their daily experience. And so I couldn't be more proud to be a part of a, a, a culture here at Tennessee that is actually truly connected and bonded and all trying to do the right things. Two quick things. When we first got here 15 years ago, our practice time on the indoor was 7 to 9 p.m., okay? That definitely has changed. We are able to practice indoor now. We wouldn't be the team we are without football. I mean, what they've done for us. The second thing, I was a federal agent before I came here. I talked to my players all the time about that. And the biggest message I put out and what you guys end up writing about is nothing good happens after 10 p.m. at night. Um, I have some girls who are, well, all our team, they're all friends. Um, they're at the Thornton Center together. They're in the football complex together. They eat lunch at Smokies together, and they're shocked by what's going on. They don't know what to believe. Um, they're concerned about it. It's some of their friends involved, and, um, you know, for them, it's inexplicable. They know that they're treated well here. They know that they... Um, have every opportunity that every other athlete has here, and so they're just shocked by what they're hearing. You know, um, we just talked about recruiting. We talked about the education that exists. I think one thing that um, needs to be understood is that I don't think everybody sitting up here feels like there's a five-alarm situation sitting here. We're not doing anything differently now than we've done over the last 15 years as coaches. We always talk about culture. We always educate. We always, you know, preach good decisions. The things that are um, being alleged right now haven't changed our world. Um, are we talking about them a little bit more with our kids? Certainly. Um, are our kids asking questions of us? Certainly. But it hasn't changed us because we don't fear and we don't live in fear. We don't, as coaches, lay in bed at 11 o'clock at night fearing, oh, my gosh, where are we? What, are our, what might be happening to our kids right now? Because we still have faith in each other and we feel, still have faith in the programs that are being led by the people sitting up here today. Well, 
Well, first of all, you know, uh, everything is about the alleged victims. And, uh, you know, we take that very, very seriously. Uh, we feel for them. Uh, we hurt for them. Uh, so I think it starts there first and foremost. But also, uh, it's not who we are. Uh, you know, we have great players in our football program. We have great individuals in this entire athletic department. Uh, we have a very good culture in place. That's why I said we're going to defend our culture. Uh, so, again, we have good people, and uh, they're embarrassed by it. They're upset about it. Uh, they know that's not who we are. Um, you know, the parents, and I think we forget that this is these are 17 to 22-year-old individuals, and I think we completely forget about it. We write about sometimes these individuals. We put kids on pedestals as though they're professional athletes. What we do forget is that they have a mother, they have a father, they have a grandmother, they have an aunt, they have an uncle, and... Uh, you know, it affects all of them. We talk about choices. We talk about decisions. Uh, and we talk about that quite frequently. Uh, and that's been well documented. But, you know, it's something. Can we do better? Yes, we can all do better. Any team, company, organization looks to improve. But I do, I do know this. We have very good people. And we have prideful individuals uh, that love being at the University of Tennessee and representing the University of Tennessee. I don't think I don't think it was restricted um, to just coaches. Um, <laughs> to be honest, in some ways, we're here speaking on their behalf. Um, I've never been around a leader like Dave Hart. Um, he bleeds University of Tennessee. He has a um, an expectation of comprehensive excellence, and that excellence starts with the kids. His agenda, first and foremost, is for every student athlete here to have a, whatever they need to be incredibly successful. So when we talk about sharing of the turf, we talk about a culture, we talk about expectations, that always starts in any sort of leadership at the top. And that starts with Dave Hart, that starts with our chancellor, and the leadership spills down from there. And, uh, you know, I think you need to know is that as head coaches, we meet once a month uh, for the entire year. So we get together, and, uh, you know, I thought we had one of the best head coaching meetings I've ever been a part of uh, a few weeks ago. And, you know, a number of head coaches, I got a call from a number of head coaches that said, hey, what about us, you know, getting out there, what we talk about in these sessions. So this was not scripted. Uh, this was not, this was kind of, just at the spur of the moment, they called Ryan, and Ryan did a great job of setting it up. But, you know, what you're hearing today is from the heart. Uh, this isn't anything that's been, you know, that we were told we had to do or anything like that. Uh, we wanted to do it because we're proud of the University of Tennessee and what we represent. I'll answer. Um, it's really frustrating. I mean, I'm the women's golf coach, and I can say I've been here for 18 years, and women have never been treated better than they are now. The female student athlete has never had more resources and more support, and um, I don't know if you know this. You probably don't know this. Women's golf shares the same training room with football. Um, our trainer says we have the best women's golf training room in the country, and it's true. Um, I also tell our recruits um, a female golfer coming to UT is treated as well as Josh Dobbs, and I believe it. I believe we have every resource available to us that he has available to him. So it's frustrating um, because this is a great place for females and males alike. I, it, it's, it's a little disheartening for me. Um, I think early on, women uh, were given, especially women's basketball, was given a great opportunity. And um, as the other sports evolved, I, it's amazing to me to see the support of our female athletes um, right now. That's why it's disheartening, because we don't lack for anything. If we need a new pair of shoes, we get a new pair of shoes. If we need to fly somewhere, we fly. If I need to go recruiting, I go recruiting. 
Uh, so anything that these guys get or butch or whatever, the women have that opportunity. So to, to think that the university is not treating women, women fairly, it is totally not true. I've never felt more support from an administrator as Dave Hart, and I've said this. Dave Hart took a chance on me. You're talking about an assistant coach going to a BCS school. So uh, before every game, after every game, I talk to Dave Hart. He cares about these student athletes. And through all this that's out and, and going around, let's don't lose sight of we're trying to, to, to make an atmosphere great for the student athlete. It's great for us. If it wasn't good for us, we wouldn't be here. But it is up to us to make sure these athletes get their education and the opportunities are there. It's incredible what the Thornton Center and we all do. Share the training room with the, the, the football team. That's unheard of. That is unheard of. We use the same weight room as the men's football team. Unheard of. Rick Barnes and, and I are, uh, are talking together about getting a new locker room. What they get, we get. So to say that women are not given opportunities here is totally false. Totally false. And, and uh, I think that's what we're trying to get across is the culture is here. It's an unbelievable program. Um, Can I? Look, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a dream place for everybody. I, I want to add something that I think is pretty incredible. Um, the, the people that transfer in from other schools to our volleyball program, they're the ones that are the biggest proponents of the University of Tennessee and our athletic department because they've been to other places and they feel that they've never been treated better, they've never been supported better than when they come to Tennessee. And we've had players come in from other BCS schools. And they never say anything negative about their school. But what they're saying is, and it's, it's a great to have some of these young ladies in our program because they get to talk to our other, <coughs> our other players who all they've um, ever um, had um, experiences is Tennessee. And they, were, they, are, they really tell them how lucky they are to be at Tennessee, to be treated the way they are, not just by the administration, not just by the coaches, but by how the athletic department is run here. And that's something that I think is, is really important to know. If you want to go back 20 years and accumulate incidents, I would imagine you could look at a lot of schools like Tennessee and come up with a similar story. And I think that's what's happened here, and that's the part that I feel is unfair. If you look at Today, the culture here now, the culture that we're, we're all talking about, the culture our student athletes feel a part of, they love it. I think they're probably surprised at what's being said about Tennessee in the national media. That's not the Tennessee that they live and breathe and feel and love on a daily basis. And the number of student athletes that we have that come here spend four years at Tennessee, come from the West Coast and end up making Knoxville their home because of what they feel when they come to the University of Tennessee, what they feel when they come to Knoxville and spend four years here and they decide this is where they want to spend the rest of their life. Those, those are the stories. And that's what our student athletes feel. When you talk about recruiting, the number one seller of your program is your student athlete. That's why we continue to get great recruiting classes. The student athletes are the ones who they don't fudge anything. They're going to tell you exactly what it's like to be a student athlete, walking the halls of the campus, uh, going out at night. Do they feel safe? Do they not feel safe? What's it like in the athletic department? Are they treated fairly? Do they get the best of everything? And if they didn't feel like this was the absolute best place in the country to be a female student athlete, we wouldn't continue to get top recruiting classes. I would like to talk a little bit about the city of Knoxville, because we, we really um, are representing them. We're representing the University of Tennessee. We're representing the state of Tennessee. And you know, I have, I have four young daughters. My wife and I uh, moved here 10 years ago, and we were overwhelmed by the, the support in your local community. Just 
Um, so to think that this is not a safe place to be is, I want to be kind in when I say it, but it, it, it's, I don't think that's an accurate statement. Um, I would love my children to come to the University of Tennessee. You know, I have four young daughters that, you know, I, I hope that they, they do that. Uh, I look around here and I see the, the family that, that we are. And, you know, we meet, we talk, we text, we call, um, we support each other. Um, and let's forget about how good of coaches we are. But I can, I can attest to how good of people these, these coaches behind me are. Um, and I, I, the culture um, within this community and within the university, from, from Dave Hart to Chancellor Cheek, I really do feel we represent what a fantastic uh, city this is. Yeah, no, I, the emotion that I feel is, uh, I feel it's, it's, it's time to get strong. Um, we, we, University of Tennessee has, we have been pioneers in, uh, in the, the history of women's athletics. Issues that uh, women have had to deal with over the years in terms of inequality um, have been changed on this campus. We've been on the forefront, and sometimes when you're a leader, it is, it's painful and you take hits. If, if we have the microscope put on this campus, I, I think we all welcome it. Like, and we really appreciate it. My, my first thought is we want to assure our fans, just the, the people who support us, that what you believe to be true about us is true. And that is that we are raising young men and women of exceptional character. And they're helping each other, uh, they're helping each other become adults that will be leaders in communities and fantastic uh, mothers and fathers and, and leaders. Um, the, the issues that we're talking about culturally go way beyond the University of Tennessee. And if we're gonna make changes in, as a society, then I think we, we welcome the opportunity to show how to lead through this uh, discussion and how to lead through this, this change. I hope that in 10 years, um, people will look back and say that a lot of the changes that have come uh, and, and some of the issues that we're talking about have really started with the University of Tennessee discussion. Not because we did anything wrong, but because you put the microscope on our athletic department and you see the way things are being done, and it's good. We got Dr. Greenholm. So, John, lady back at Greenholm. Colleagues, you mentioned you guys lose your bikes in the afternoon club. You mentioned the glass story that you take with you. What do you try to say to the younger kids who come in? Well, they, I, I think first you look at them as they're, they're going, they're, they're going to do social things. And I always tell them, I guess going from Ralph, my mother used to tell me, my mom gave me two more hours, Ralph. She said nothing good happened after midnight. So I like my mom better than you. But, but John, you, you know, we talk about it. We talk a lot about social media and if anything out there social media is you know we, we talk about taking pictures and okay so I'm, I'm just tell you what I tell them I'm not drinking but there could be a, a a bottle in the back well when I get a picture taken it's assumed you just think I'm drinking I'm drunk and on make your own conclusions so we just tell them to be smart a lot of our kids are are great friends with the football players and they come down and watch us practice. They hang out with our kids. Our kids hang out with, you know, athletics, it's socially, sometimes you don't get to be a normal student. You don't get to go out and make friends outside of athletics. So you tend to congregate together. And um, I don't have any problem with that. I just, I just tell them, as I said earlier, you have to make the right choices. And the choices you make, there's consequences. So we hope that we've... They've been raised properly. We educated them to understand that. Look, kids know right from wrong. So if you get in a situation, you got to get out of it. 
Um, and also tell them if something happens, you're not comfortable. Um, you, we, don't, we don't encourage drinking. Kids drink. And I tell them if, if you've had some form of alcohol and you can't call me, I'm not going to judge you. But we just try to put them in the right situation. Don't get behind the wheel and drive. So I hope I answered your question. I just, I, I, we're in this, these kids know each other. They hang out with each other. And um, they're going to go to parties. And, and uh, you just hope that they make the right choices. No, I'd like to finish because I think we're stereotyped. And uh, I just want to get that point across. I take that personal. And we are raising these kids and their kids. And it's all about the power of choices. And have we had some individuals make some poor choices? Absolutely. But I think anyone who's a father and a mother, if you look back and if you're real with yourself and your parenthood, they've also made choices uh, that maybe we didn't, uh, that were inappropriate. And it's our job to continue to educate them and hold them responsible for their choices. But we have good people. And again, it's easy to sit out there and judge when you don't live our day every day, you're not around the student athletes, you're not around these coaches. And so to sit here and stereotype that, there's a lot more on this campus than just a quote unquote football party. And I take that seriously because that's my job. I live it every day. Um, I, when everything happens, I take it personal because it does mean something to me. I understand what we represent uh, our players now understand what they represent. And I think it's unfair uh, that a lot of these individuals that don't go to parties, that have never touched a drop of alcohol, that are tremendous ambassadors for the University of Tennessee, and we, I tell our football team, the actions of one reflect on all. I get that. But again, I don't want to diminish the great people that we have here in the administration, the coaching staff, our student body, and our student athletes. And just this, uh, well, I'll make a comment. Just this past weekend in uh, Florida, Juwan James, Rainey Gaffin, they're a couple. They've been together a long time, okay? Juwan James, that's what I said, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, they're signing autographs and kids are around them the whole time, okay? So, We've had a lot of great relationships with football players. Well, I started off, and I'll, I'll speak first and foremost. Our hearts, our prayers, our feelings go out to the alleged victims. That's something that I know personally. I'm, I'm a parent. That hits at the heart. So it starts with that. I know we all feel for them. So that's first and foremost. That's why we're constantly trying to educate our players. We're constantly trying to prevent any of this from happening. Um, that's our role as coaches. That's our role as parents. When we recruit these young men, we're taking over uh, parenting, uh, you know, and they've been raised, you know, for 17 years, and then we take over for them. Uh, but I don't want to diminish, and I don't want you to think any way, shape, or form that we don't feel for the alleged victims. We feel for them. I hurt for them. We all hurt for them. So I just I want to make sure you understand that. That's, that hits at our soul.
I think um, in answer to the why now, because it's time. Um, I think uh, this athletic department and our administration um, has taken a beating uh, for a number of years. Um, since the consolidation of the two departments, um, the logo um, change, the Nike change, and now um, these alleged um, um, you know, uh, sexual um, assaults. So I think all of us um, want to let everybody know that we are um, behind our administration, um, that there's a lot um, more to the University of Tennessee and the, the athletic department um, that what is being, than what is being read about, um, and that this is a great place. I think there's going to be a perception today that this is just a big kumbaya love fest up here, um, you know, and so that would be a little bit of a negative connotation of what this day is about, but I think it's time for us to, um, you know, and Matt Credich's words were um, to be strong. And I think we all came to, like Butch said, we came to the administration, we came to Ryan Robinson several weeks ago and said, we want to put our faces out there. We want to let people know that we're behind the decisions that have been made within this athletic department. And with that, and all of the things and the stories that have been told today about sharing facilities and sharing resources and sharing dollars is all true. And that's the essence of what is taking place within this athletic department. And so instead of us continuing to lay down and just kind of take it and take the beating, we felt like as a coaching unit, we want our administration to know that we have their back and that we have each other's backs and we have our student athletes' backs. So it was just, in a word, it was time. I guess. I Um, to address your question and yours as well, I would say just one thing. Um, all of us as Division I coaches, I do not think have as a part of our DNA to be satisfied and comfortable. I don't think that's something that, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to portray that, that everything's great and we're fine. I'll speak for myself and say that part of my role as a head coach is to find ways to be better, always. And with this situation, I think that is what I feel from these coaches as well, that there is a constant dialogue about ways to be better. And I think it's very important to say that um, and not assume that, that we're satisfied with where we are but we want to work to make things better always. And challenges give us that opportunity. You know, Brett, I, I think there's, there's a lot of former employees that have left this university, and the majority of them will tell you they love this university. And I think there's a, there's a few out there that um, – are not happy and, and disgruntled, and, and that's their opinion, and they choose to put it out on where everybody can can um, can read their opinion. But I think what what we're trying to understand that one percent is not how most of us feel here at the university. So, um, you know, we're, we're not trying to. I don't think we're just telling y'all this is we're tooting our horn and nothing happens back. Yeah, things happen. And we just try to deal with them collectively. So unfortunate that we have victims of sexual assault. That that's got it. That that's there's no part of that in within this university. We're going to continue to to make sure that we we eliminate that. Is it all going to go away? No, but we're going to try to put our young men and women in situations that they can. It can be a positive environment. But to say that that you leave this university and, and to say this university's going, this athletic pro program's going to all hell and back, absolutely not. And, you know, we're, we're constantly defending ourselves of people's opinion. So I think we're here 
to give you our opinion and what we feel. You can hear it straight from us of how we feel and how our athletes feel. Um, I think every, and most people here, I can't say everybody loves, athletes love to be here, and, and uh, it's a great place for them. Men or women, logo, no logo. It's about sports. Do you have the opportunity as a young female, do you have an opportunity to get better? Is that opportunity for you going to get better if you don't have a certain logo? No. Is the opportunity there that you have the, the, the resources, the equipment, the coaches? That's what, we, that's what we need to be striving for. Hey, I, we have a Lady Vol logo. I think it's awesome. I, 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 don't, I don't take that lightly. It's an honor for me to, to coach at the university and have this logo. But it's also our opportunity as coaches to put these females uh, in a situation where they're competing and they're representing the university. And I think we're doing such a better job as all of us sitting here. I, I never would have bounced resources off uh, of Butch or, or a tennis, a, a, a men's tennis coach. That never would have happened. But I think we're comfortable now of, of dialogue between each other and it's very open and honest. I, I just... I just wanted to, I, I came here to represent my student athletes more than anything. And they're the ones that provide me with a lot of the information about the questions that you're asking. And, you know, about the victims, you know, obviously our hearts really go out to them. We, you know, there's no uh, room for, for that in, in any environment. Um, we talk about it a lot. I talk to my athletes and they, they tell me that they're as shocked as can be when they hear of something like that uh, happening within people that they know. It's not something that they see. It's not something that they fear every day or anything like that. It's something that shocks them that it's happened. And I, this is coming from my student athletes. And so that I just want to be here to represent them because they will, will let me know what the culture is and what's going on out there. Um, you know, to go with Brent with, with your question, our, our players, our, our young ladies, are better off today than they were five years ago. And, it's, and a lot of that is because of the um, uh, combination of the men's and women's programs. We literally practiced off campus for part of our, our practice sessions because we couldn't get a court on campus. We just, it was a situation, nobody's fault, it was just a situation. And the first thing that happened when, when Mr. Hart and his staff came in was we need to help this program because they are not being uh, supported in, in the right way right now. And sure enough, it took a, you know, a couple years to get, but that it took a couple years just because of permits and those type of things. But it was a priority for them to spend almost $3 million on a female uh, uh, sport to, to make sure that those young ladies are being taken care of. And, the, you know, that's what I know. Those are facts. And our players that come to us tell us that, that they are being treated in a great manner. And we've had players, you know, they're starting to go out that were here before we had that new facility. And, and it's, it's been night and day in terms of how they've been able to um, run their life in a less stressful way at the University of Tennessee. And it's because of the support that we've gotten from the administration and then from all the coaches. But I just, I came here to tell our, our players story and, and they love it here. They feel safe. They feel that they're supported in a way that they can win championships and be very successful academically. Yeah, I have a conference call too to get to. I just want to close with this. Um, heard a lot of great things from a lot of great people. Um, and I, the, the one question that was asked a lot is why today, why? Well, I think the proof is, is that we are one Tennessee as an administration, we are one Tennessee as a coaching staff, and we are one Tennessee as student athletes. And we don't, we work, we play, and we lead at one of the best universities in the country. And I think everyone up here and all our student athletes are very proud of that.